Let's talk about common methods bias, which is a real common source of error in survey research. Now, what do I mean by common methods bias? That's when we have some hypothesis and we've got a, a independent variable and a dependent variable and we get the data from the same source, we can end up with some spurious correlations that really aren't true. So let me give you an example. Suppose we have a really ridiculous hypothesis such as liking chocolate cake is associated with having a competent supervisor. Now there's no reason in the world why how much you like chocolate cake should be associated with the competence of your supervisor, but if you were to start taking a survey of people, you would get a fairly strong positive correlation. How come? Well, that's because everybody has their, their own personality and stuff, and you're going to get some people like uh, Happy Harry, who's always happy and joyful and positive, and some people like Debbie Downer, who are never happy and only see the sad things in life. They'll be taking the survey, and their responses will be influenced by their personality. So. Happy Harry is going to say, yes, I love chocolate cake. It reminds me of all the wonderful birthday parties and getting together with friends that I have. Chocolate cake is absolutely the best. And then you ask him about the, his supervisor, and his enthusiasm will carry over for his supervisor. Even if the supervisor isn't very competent, he'll still be kind of positive and happy about his supervisor. Whereas Debbie Downer, She'll remember the time that she got a big chocolate stain on her dress and she wasn't able to get it out and come to the conclusion that chocolate cake is really the worst type of cake. And so we'll rate chocolate cake very lowly. And the same thing with her supervisor. Um, she'll, she'll tend to rate their, her supervisor uh, uh, lower also. And so since the two pieces of data are being influenced by people's personalities, even when there's like no real correlation, we'll get a correlation due to people's uh, uh, personality. So this common methods bias can lead to spurious correlations because of the personality of the rater or by the mood of the rater. Um, maybe you'll get some raters who just are happy that day and some who are sad that day and that will influence the coral. Uh, the data and create a spurious correlation. Um, we also have a phenomenon known as what's known as acquiescence bias. And that there's some people who will just tend to agree with everything. I know I'm one of those people. I look at a statement, chocolate cake is the best. I'll say, yeah, it really is. Um, I, I love chocolate cake. And then the next statement will be chocolate cake is the worst. And I'm like, oh, yeah, chocolate cake is the worst because it is really messy and you end up with it all over your face and you're embarrassed and stuff. And so I just tend to agree with, with everything. So if you tend to agree with everything, you're going to create some correlations that, um, that aren't very realistic. Now, there's also common methods bias due to a consistency bias. People want to be uh, you present consistent responses due to some implicit theory. So if I have, uh, um, uh, I've been answering questions about my supervisor, and I think my supervisor is is really really competent. Then they ask me uh, items on a survey about um, how much I like my job. I'll be saying, well, I have a great supervisor. I have a great supervisor, I must have a great job. And I'll give higher marks to be consistent in the answers that I give. Some people also are strongly influenced by social desirability. They respond with a socially acceptable answer because they don't want to get in trouble, especially if they don't think that the uh, survey is anonymous. If there's any doubt, which is often the case with electronic surveys, people will tend to give the socially desirable answer, and that can create a spurious correlation. And then there's the leniency bias, and that's assigning socially desirable traits to someone who the respondent likes. So if I like my boss, I don't know about his 
personality or something like that, or he might have a lot of flaws, but I like him, so I'll give him a, a high grade because, or high, uh, uh, high mark for a desirable personality because I like him, or he pays me well, or something like that. So common methods bias is a is a major problem in survey research and can lead to to these correlations that that really aren't there that are really due to other things. So how do we respond to this? Well, one, if possible, use separate sources for the uh, independent variable and the dependent variable, especially if you're doing leadership studies. If you're studying about how a leader functions, get data from both the leader and the, the follower um, so that you can, uh, um, you'll have these independent sources of, of data that are, won't have the same biases in them. Now this makes anonymity a lot harder because you have to give a code to, to each person that matches up and you have to um, keep the, the code confidential, but you'll get higher quality uh, uh, data that way. If you are going to get data from both the independent on the independent variable and the dependent variable from the same source of person, sometimes it's better to put a third variable in the questionnaire so that people don't see how everything is related. This is called a distractor item or a distractor set of questions. And so if you think people might figure out what your hypothesis is and want to be consistent or support it, toss in some question asking about something that's totally irrelevant. Often I, I put in uh, uh, questions about some personality trait that's not related to the study. Um, so that will create a psychological separation so that people won't automatically make the uh, connection. Um, also, avoid asking information on abstract concepts like uh, provide, like asking people to provide information on their supervisor's attitudes. Oh, they don't know what's happening inside their supervisor's attitudes. They might know what's happening on their own, their own attitudes inside their own head, but trying to get data about somebody else's attitudes is really difficult. Focus on behaviors. People are much better at observing behaviors than they are uh, uh, attitudes, especially when it's the behaviors or attitudes of other people. You should also avoid items that have socially desirable responses. For example, suppose you want to find out how much people read uh, uh, news analyses. You could give them the Likert item. I read in-depth news an analyses every day. Ooh, that sounds like something good to do. So maybe people that don't do it, they'll still mark that they do because they don't want to seem like idiots or nincompoops or uh, they want to seem cultured and sophisticated. So there's a very clear socially desirable response to that first item. Now in the second one, we have, I prefer watching humorous videos over reading in-depth news analyses. And this would be reverse scored. If they, if they strongly agree with this, that would show less of an interest in in-depth news analyses. This one doesn't have a clear social desirability bias to it. It's like, well, are you a fun and are a fun and 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 humorous person that likes watching uh, cat videos, or are you a person that prefers reading in-depth news analyses? And you can choose either one and feel good about yourself the way that you answer there. And then. The most common one in organizational psychology is to control for people's personality. We can control for positive and negative effect. Now, sometimes they do other variables like social desirability, personality traits, or something else. Um, but generally, the one that's most common in organizational psychology is it's called the positive affect and negative affect scale. PA is positive affect, NA is negative affect, affect means feelings. So the scale is called PANIS, positive affect, negative affect scale. So it asks you questions, how often in the last week did you feel happy, excited, joyful? and going on a scale going from never to every day. And that measures positive effect. So happy Harry would be really high in that. 
and that asks for negative effect. How often were you sad? How often were you depressed? How often were you uh, feeling hopeless? And that measures negative affect. And Debbie Downer would tend to be high in that. So we can measure how often people uh, experience positive affect and how often they experience negative affect and use those as control variables, variables to remove the common methods bias. So that's uh, the, the most common strategy for dealing with a common, me common methods bias, at least in survey research, when the personality peoples might when the personality of people might create spurious correlations.